Hello, how are we doing? Today I'm going to show you how to make this ornament. Um, yeah, I'm going to say the C word, it's a Christmas ornament. Um, normally I'm strictly no Christmas before December person, but when you're crafting things you sort of have to shift things earlier in the year because you need time. Um, so this it's looking more and more like a snowflake but the intention was to make a star but you know still a suitable ornament um, I have this one my magic wand is a four millimeter hook and I have two colors and I'm gonna start with the center so this pattern is by Kate Pine and they've called it the Seren flower which is quite lovely uh, you should be able to find it on Ravelry as a download. So we're starting with a magic ring. So we're just sort of wrapping the yarn around the needle and we're going to start with putting a bunch of doubles and chains into this gap here and if I leave this tail I can then pull it tight later on. So first thing I need to do, my first chain and my second chain and my third chain. Okay, now I need to make my five points here by doing three doubles, chain two, three doubles, chain two. Obviously this chain of three is standing in for my first um, double in this section. So I need to do two more doubles here. So in, around, around and through, around and through. Around, hook in, through, around, and through, around, and through. I'm just talking to myself now. This is not the best angle, is it? Anyway, is it chain one or chain two? Can you chain two? It's a problem when you're trying to do the second of something, you want it to be a repeat. Um, yeah, I've got a few different crochet ornaments that could be, oops, a daisy. It could be a lot of fun. But we'll just wait and see. I think I'm going to change the angle that I'm doing this at because I don't think this one's going to be a lot of fun for you. So, end of the stitch. So, there we are. I've done two of my clusters. No, I haven't. One more of these. One more double. <laughs> right. So, we have... Oh. No, I had done it. It had just slipped a bit. Undo that. Nice and easy when you make a mistake, because with crochet, you've only got one stitch to worry about. So we've got three, a gap, three and I need to do that three more times. I'm gonna hide over here because I think this will make a better angle. That's me done my fifth block of three. So I can pull this tail and I'll secure that when I'm tidying up all the loose ends. What I need to do now is I need to do a chain and I'm going to just slip stitch into this one. Round one complete. Oh, I've split the yarn there. See? Okay, so the next bit is doubles again. And um, we're gonna go, so I need to do three here. and we're aiming for that space. This one's all about those chain spaces. So we're going one, two, three, over into that gap. If I hadn't pulled it tight, it might have been a little bit easier to get this shape going. Okay, so that's three. I'm then going to chain two, is it chain one? I think it's chain two. 
fairly certain it's been consistently chain two. And we're going to double the number of clusters we're doing, so we're going back into the same chain gap. I quite like doing flat ornaments because they're easy to slip into a Christmas card and then people can feel remembered if that's something you want to do especially if you're not going to be able to go around and visit people so much you can do a little token of oh 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 I made a mistake right here we are not doing any chain gaps between these clusters because there's already a thing there. Do no no undo undo. Yarn is just so forgiving of mistakes. I think it's one of those crochet and knitting are great for learning that and reinforcing. Yeah. Crochet and knitting and other yarn crafts that involve working from the ball with a continuous length are great for learning the sort of a life lesson I think we all need that it's not what happens, it's what you do about it. Um, because when you make a mistake, it's just so easy to undo it and keep going. You can s correct your mistakes, you can pick things up if it's not working, you can undo it and you can start again, you can correct mistakes, you can fudge things later on, you can course correct, um, but the yarn's just yarn. It's not, for the most part, damaged by what you've been doing to it. And as long as you've not cut it yet, you can undo it. There are exceptions and there's things that you can't fix, uh, particularly if you've got particularly grippy or fragile yarn or you're doing something bizarre. Um, but for the most part, it's a really forgiving craft. It's frustrating and it's time consuming um, and you have to be willing to redo something uh, a few times over um, in some cases. But on the whole, it's a very forgiving craft. And I think more people could do with learning to be okay with those mistakes and learning I think the question that I normally ask people when they're talking to me about a mistake is uh, how much is this going to bother you is it going to bother you more than you are willing to put up with uh, is it going to bother you more than fixing it well and if it's uh, oh I was you know I've realized I was two rows late in my increases on this hundred row thing if that doesn't bother you it doesn't bother you if it's something you can fix sort of on the sly go for it right okay I'm at the end here I'm not actually gonna join that that way because I'm gonna join it using a needle which is the one I want that one that one so scissor time don't need much because I'm only doing a few stitches and this doesn't need to be overly done because it's not going to be under that much strain. So. so this is coming out of my last stitch. I'm going to go in here around the needles. Not sure how well focused this is. Um, but I'm essentially going to duplicate stitch to close this gap. And this is going to go down in here and that's essentially going to look pretty much like just another stitch. And we have our pentagon which is this centre here. So I need to turn this centre into a star. So, to do this, I'm going to be poking these sides together and we're going to be adapting. So yeah, this actually goes like this. Um, yeah. So we have our pentagon and we're going to turn that into our snowflake slash star. 
So, color number two. So, looking at these, I've just realised I, in fact, made a mistake. So, I'm going to have to practice what I preach. But it's fine. It is just yarn. I can start again. And if I couldn't use this bit for whatever tangly reason, I have more. Like, it's fine. It's just yarn, just need to start again. <sighs> Still a bit annoying though. Right. <laughs> But then I need to find an end. Yeah, okay. Right, triple time. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Extra one. Ping, ping, ping. There we are. Okay. Yeah. So now when we compare them, they're starting to look much more similar. Which is good. That's what we want. One, two. Just another three of these to go. One more to go. So, here we have this, and I just need to attach this here. So, right, uh, I'm done with my yellow, don't need that anymore. Same thing as before, I'm just going to mimic some stitches to attach this where I want it to go. Let me just tug that a little bit. There we have star. And the next thing I want to do is put my outer edge and the loop on. So let's get started. Gonna do a loop of twenty stitches. One, two, three, twenty. Okay. I'm going to this is where I deviate slightly from the pattern on this outer round. Um, because I'm making it in case the outer edge and on Kate's pattern she has it as a sort of inner rim, um, which is kinda cool but not what I'm going for. So let's just go. And just to emphasize this pentagon shape, I'm going to do one, chain one, second one in this space. And that'll just give it a little bit more of a corner. When you increase in crochet or knitting, that's when you persuade the fabric to bend on itself, uh, which is quite cool. And then as an opposite to the increase at the top of this point, I'm going to do this as a decrease. And that will just fill that bit in a little bit more. I am back round to the edge and I'm going to come and face you for this bit. So, 
we're back round to the end. I'm going to cut this. Last time I need to cut this. I'm going to bring this all the way through. Thread my needle. And my recording is saying that's 40 minutes um, I've been working on this from start to end with all of my babbling and mistake. So it's not, you know, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. Um, this is only my second time doing this pattern. Uh, this is one of the things you can teach yourself to do when you get used to things is I can look at, especially when it's a sort of this kind of construction in blocks, you can look at it and you can tell what stitches you need to do to recreate whatever it is that you had just been doing. So this can run along here. And I will soon be done. Um, 10 points to anyone who can tell me if they think they know what inspired these two colour schemes. Um, it's, it's not exactly a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Good going, cheerful. You are... drifting off in the middle of sentences. Right, so, yeah, so that was my 40 minutes to make oh, my second little decoration, which I think turned out pretty fab and you give it a good press and then that's ready to be posted off and to arrive to decorate a Christmas tree. So. Lots of love. I will see you all around and look after yourself. Bye bye.